I am Zach, I'm the lead guitarist for Mind Razor and Poison in a Bottle, and I'm here today to show you how I wrote Mind Razor's intro track for our live shows, as well as I think it's going to go on the album, the plugins that I used, and kind of my process behind it. So, let's start off by just playing the thing. So, that was that. Basically, I found out, I think it was like the Thursday before our show, that we needed an intro track for Saturday. And I was busy all night Thursday, busy most of the day Friday, so I whipped this up in about 20 or 30 minutes between when I got home from the gym and when I had to go uh, to work on Friday. So, let's just show the MIDI here, if we can solo the track. So, the first thing I did was write the chord progression. I really only know how to play in the key of A minor. For those of you who are theory uh, insufficient like I am, that just means on this fancy little keyboard here, I'm only playing the big black keys. On a regular keyboard, they'd be white. But, you know, so I just had this, like, general idea for a chord progression. So I'm going to just skip to the actual progression here and play that. And the whole thing is really just that twice. It starts off by just playing the root note, the A there. It kind of like swells in a little bit. You can see there's little gaps here. And once you get to the actual like song where everything else comes in, uh, you can see that I have the chords overlapping a little bit so that it's more... Um, you know, it kind of flows better. And it fades out pretty much the same way it came in, but backwards. So instead of just um, being the A and then adding the the fifth and the third, it's the fifth drops out and the third drops out and it's just the A. how that feels so that was the idea for it and then I'm like okay cool so now I need a kind of like creepy suspicious or like suspenseful type thing not suspicious they were originally talking about using a f excerpt from like Jaws or Friday the 13th and I'm not about that we have the tools to write our own stuff let's write our own stuff and this is what I came up with pretty much just following the exact same pattern that the chords are doing but instead of being chords it's just the triad kind of broken up so let's just hit record here and you just 
just add a little bit of flair here and there with like half steps for the sake of making it more suspenseful, having more tension. Especially with the last two, it's like harmonic minor. It makes you want to go back up to the A here. But, you know, pretty much just took the thing that the chords were already doing and just turned it into arpeggios. Uh, for the chords, I was using the full ensemble from Novo Essentials, Heaviosity. Then the part above it is the Dusty Toy Piano preset on uh, Mosaic Tape. And I just changed a few things around here. I changed what the clicking noise was. I don't remember what these two were, but this was like the toy something or other. Let's see here. Yes, yeah, so this was the metal tape toy preset, I think. And I thought that the vibraphone sounded a little creepier, so I'll just kind of like AB those for you real quick. Let's see here. Let's just solo this track out. This is the vibraphone. That's not the only thing I changed, but I think that's what the preset actually uses. And if I'm wrong, by all means, correct me. Oh, it's the, the dust toys. It's not that. I feel like the vibraphone has... It's a lot brighter than the dust pumping toys thing is so that's why I went with that um, I don't even remember what I did for the last two channels here but I changed those uh, I like the clock one a lot because it just has a cool little effect to it and it's so minor it really is but But now that I like soloed that and I played the clicking of the clock, uh, yeah, the clicking of the clock, ticking of the clock, you hear it in the note afterwards. Uh, and I really just liked how that went. And then I messed around with the reverb, messed around with the EQ a little bit, and that was fine. So then this next track, I still don't know how I feel about this one here. What I basically wanted was something to kind of like fill in the spaces that I felt like were there in the other tracks so it's just basically background noise and what I did was I took the uh, evil chimes preset and I modified it a little bit so that it sounds more like radio static it kind of sounds like a cymbal swell a little bit but let's see if I can find the original preset do 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 I can't read, so I'm a little slow. So there it is. This was the original preset, I think. And then, in the context of the song, sounds like marbles kind of rolling around at the beginning there. Like you hear it a little bit. Like I don't I don't really know how to describe it, but I wanted it a little more distorted. I wanted it a little uh different. So, that's why I changed it. And I don't know how to load my preset back, so whatever. We'll just leave it. Point being, it's background noise just to like fill the space especially like halfway through the song where I basically take everything and I just play it up an octave playing the root of the chords that the strings are doing it just adds another instance of that like marble rolling sound with a little bit of that creepy overtone 
you kind of hear the pitches of it, but it's just so quiet, so buried in the mix that it's just adding a teeny tiny bit of effect. And I don't know, just like in terms of layering, I thought that was cool. And then this last part here is the bells. So this is the Haunted Kingdom Bells preset, and like with the um, Dusty Toy Piano, I just modified it a little bit, added a lot more reverb, I added a lot more delay, just so it would feel bigger, and I felt like it would complement the kind of tight, bouncy kind of feeling to the Dusty Toy Piano. in the background there and it's kind of sitting in the echoes of the piano until halfway through. And once it really starts to shine, um, I wanted it a little more rounded sounding, kind of like how when I AB'd the Dusty Toy Piano versus the vibraphone setting that I use, uh, I wanted it more round, kind of like what the Dusty Toy was originally like. Because I thought it would add more character to the song. And I don't know. I feel like it did. The original presets for both of them kind of sound very similar. So I felt like it was worth just modifying them both a little bit to give them each. They're similar enough that they have their own character now. And I feel like they complement each other a little bit better than uh, the basic presets do. And it took me like 5 or 10 minutes of just playing with it. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then in terms of the heartbeat and all, originally when I wrote it, I wrote it with drums doing the heartbeat type thing. So, just take that off mute and just mute the... And the thought process behind that was they wanted a heartbeat in the intro track, kind of like the Revelry has on the EP. Um, but I put the two Tom hits at the end there to kind of signal to us like that's the end of it so that we wouldn't have to actually count it. But they weren't huge on it. And by they, I mean the other guys in uh, Mindraiser. They wanted the actual like heartbeat sample that's in the Revelry. So uh, I can't know. Let's see if we can just zoom in here. Yes, yeah, so like you can see right here, I literally took the Revelry and I imported the song file into Reaper here. And I just cut off where the guitars start so that it's the heartbeat sample. And obviously like a Doppler recording of an actual heartbeat sounds better than Easy Drummer 2. But, you know, it fits the bill. Overall, this took me like, like I said, 20 or 30 minutes to write. Uh, I don't know if I touched on this much, but the bells here are pretty much doing the same. They're playing the roots that the Dusty Toy Piano part's playing. There it is. song and then halfway through I just really had it playing the same chords arpeggiated but since the dusty toy piano is a little more all over the place with what it's doing it has all those little half steps it has the more nuanced feel I basically just stuck to the actual chords themselves for the second half with the bells <laughs> I 
I don't know what the chromatic thing was, but point being, it's just the root and the third of whatever that chord is. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there really wasn't that much thought I even put into this. This was just kind of like a sit down, write something so that we have it for Saturday. And, you know, it went over well. I think everyone digs it a lot. I'm still going back and forth now with this uh, this track here, whether I want my preset or their preset on it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, all I used for this was Mosaic Tape and Novo Essentials from Heaviosity, right? Yeah. And a Heartbeat sample from The Revelry. But if you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask. Um, my master chain is basically just an exciter. A uh, compressor, an EQ, just to clean some stuff up. And I think the EQ's even bypassed. I don't even know, man. But yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.